Anybody got any? Okay, okay, okay. I thought Spencer was yeah. going to talk first. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Sinister was going off for this, so we want to go with Sinister. Mm, I talked too much in the last one. You go. <laughs> okay. Well, welcome everyone to the season two recap of Cheap Seat Critics. We made it. We made it, and through we lived through Halo. <laughs> we we managed to survive Halo. We have ten things down. Ten things down. Uh, yeah. All, all mixed bags. Uh, yeah. We should have called the show. Hey, I, I'm I'm uh, I'm still thoroughly surprised that Mister Incorporated is better than Batman. I I, I think that's the best thing we've watched overall I, so far. Yeah. I think this is good balance. Uh. As what was that, Crimson? You brought that up. The, just good balance overall of good things and bad things. It wasn't necessarily all good or all bad, which is what I think a season should have. But you know, sometimes we yeah, go and blend on different bunch of genres and stuff. Yeah, that's true. All across the board. Um, I guess I'll preface this right out the gate that Sinister was not able to watch Master Incorporated. Been too busy. And, and I just, you know, throw me under the bus. Come on. Oh, let me have it. Let me have, it. let me have it. Let me have it. If they're like, why didn't Sinister ever talk about that? That's why. And you have one episode left of Miss Marvel? Uh, yeah, so I can at least... Mostly give, talk about it. Yeah. yeah, I can yeah give a little bit on that. Yeah. So I guess since you missed that pod, what what are your thoughts so far? Uh, not for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I... It's it's kind of a it's a weird one where I think they finally actually succeeded in making a decent show that but the problem is is it really doesn't need to be a superhero show. Thank it, you. That, that was my that, point. That, that's yeah. very vindicating for Crimson over there. <laughs> yeah, like they they managed to make another you know finally I guess after being successful with WandaVision managed to make a a decent show that had very little need for it to be a superhero show, and yeah. the superhero stuff seems kind of tacked on. It took them long enough. <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, Again, a mixed bag, though, because they it kind of makes the show not be as good, I guess, with the superhero stuff. But, uh, you know, what yeah. are you going to do? Yeah. I mean, How do you like the characters in it? Uh, honestly, I was, I was worried that I was going to be kind of annoyed... Uh, but they're actually fine. Yeah. It's probably maybe like uh, a few few moments where I'm I'm you know I have that normal uh, old man in me that thinks younger people are uh, annoying. <laughs> oh, like the kid who almost killed himself taking yeah, a you know, out a window. <laughs> yeah, you know it's you know, normal stuff. But uh, yeah, yeah. Honestly, I was surprised that I. Uh, I mean, if anything, the only issue I have with it is it's kind of boring, but, like, I can't really fault it too much, you know, because it doesn't really, it doesn't really seem like something that would lend itself to being really action-packed, I guess. Yeah. Unless you played the game and then you're like, where's, where's all that cool robot stuff? But, uh, you know, what are you, what are you going to do? Yeah, I, one of the, one of the things I ended up liking about it is it's a small-scale story, because every Marvel TV show and late movie as of late is just about the end of the world, and this is... Not really that. Like this is day in the yeah, life. Uh, I kind of like that. The, the two worlds combining would result in the destruction of our our world. Yeah, yeah. but it doesn't involve the rest of the world. To, like the Avengers don't need to show up because nothing so overt happens in a shared yeah. world with a bunch of other heroes that they would notice this. Mm-hmm. I get where he's coming from, but yeah, it's. I guess it's kind of like a similar thing that I've. I, I think has kind of been a problem with Marvel is that they've gone so big that I really don't know how to do small scale anymore, um, which is is something that I think this kind of at least kind of gets back on track a little bit. I, I like I think Crimson Chime in there. There is a it, it, the world could end still, but it you know it's set and such. But I think like the characters themselves are grounded enough that. It, it doesn't kind of take away from the small scale of the story, mm-hmm. uh, which I guess is maybe hopefully a good thing for Marvel. Uh, we'll uh, see. I Let's do see. think it's to the show's strength for sure. But yeah, I don't think it's a detriment to the show for it being small scale. If anything, it it is a a helping hand. 
if I ever do watch the Marvels movie, I I ha- I will like one character in it now. Yeah, there you go. So there is that. Yeah, that two could could go well. You know how? You don't know. I mean, it could have you know Kamala's dad in it, so that could be two characters. Oh, that's true. Probably. That's true. <laughs> um, I guess one more Miss Marvel thing is the villains. Mm-hmm. I know you haven't seen the last episode, so it's kind of villain heavy in that in regards, but. What do you think of them so far? (laughs) Yeah. Uh, They're fine. I mean, Uh, Sizzler got up to the point of seeing everything with the gins. Gins? I guess that's true. Yeah, the last one's the uh, damage control. Yeah. Damage control? Yeah. So they're just fine? Yeah, I mean, they're... I would like them to be... I don't, you know, it's hard because I, I feel like it's, again, it's kind of like a thing with like Marvel stuff where like they've gotten used to like really big, you know, the big bads, you know, you got your Thanos, your Ultron, all that stuff. So so they're not that level of good, but like they're, they're enough where it's not a huge big deal. You know, they're they're just okay. I kind of like a lower stakes, I guess, version of that. Mm Mm-hmm. That's fair. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's um, it's not the best, but it it uh, yeah. could be better. If you ever go back to listen to the pod, you will just listen to Crimson and I rip into the Department of Damage Control for uh, a fair bit amount of time. <laughs> that seems to be a common theme. Yeah, yeah, yeah this is even uh, Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was I was going in with that comic viewpoint, and uh, yeah, there was there was a bit terror. Here and there. <laughs> Oof. Only a little, huh? <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah, just a wee, wee bit. Uh, uh, and then, I guess, to wrap up Sinister's catch-up for the audience, uh, Turning Red, you weren't present for. We got your score, which yeah. I think was a five? It was, was four it, or five. It was a four. Four. I was, I was on the fence about whether it would be a four or a five, and I chose a four. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I guess general thoughts on that one. Uh, wasn't for me. <laughs> Got to preface that's, that. That's pretty much. No, I, sister, I, we're talking about turning red, not Miss Marvel. No, uh, no, it's the same thing. Uh, no, because I, 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 no, I was joking with them. It was okay, but uh, turning red, I, I know like the goal that you know the people who made it had in mind that it was about puberty, which is something that everybody goes through, mm-hmm. and I can you know. I'm not going to knock them for that because I think they were correct, at least in that frame of mind. But this is it. I I I liked what they were trying to do with the movie, but I can I can safely say that I was not somebody that this movie was necessarily made for. Which doesn't have to you know it doesn't have to be the case for every movie. You know I don't have to have a movie made for me all the time. I'm a you know a cishet white man. I, I've had enough glory. You know, I I don't need that anymore. Some other people are, you know, <laughs> representation than I do. That's fair, and that's fine. That's how it should be. So this is, you know, this is, I think, a good direction for people to be going in, you know, to kind of make it an interesting story that's different. Uh, so, I like I said, I, I gave it a four, but that's just, you know, from my own personal view, I don't think this movie itself is a four, but for me it is. Uh, so, yeah, I, I mean, I'm sure there's a... I, I'm, I definitely know there's a lot of people that wrote it. So that alone is enough for me to say it was probably a decent movie that just wasn't for me. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, fair enough. Uh, yeah. And do you like the, cl- the characters? I like or the faces. <laughs> I like the... They, they do get the expressions favorite. very well. I, I like, yeah, I like the, the expressions. Um... Yeah, the expressions, the animate. I mean, the animation was great. Uh, you know, you can't ever say. You, I, I, it's very rare that I've ever seen like a bad, badly animated, you know, Disney or Pixar film. So uh, this is definitely, you know, within that wheelhouse. So uh, I thought the character designs were a little mm, strange, but I, I think it fit for what they were going for. So. Yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, they I definitely, they definitely capture it, the yeah. early 2000s vibe for yeah, the kids. But, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm I, old enough to remember when, when boy bands were, like, super huge. I'm old enough to remember handing Rift, uh, Rift CDs for my, out to uh, friends. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, like... Freaking uh, NSYNC was huge when I was a very, very little kid. So I, I and Britney Spears. So I, I know the, I, I know, I know the history. And yeah, then there was kind of the resurgence of like One Direction and Wanted. Mm-hmm. And now, now, uh, was it BTS or whatever? Uh, oh, well, now it's know, K-pop, whatever. really. In the in modern, yeah, yeah, it's K-pop. Boy band. They're a boy band, though. No, there, I mean, no, there are, band. there are definitely boy bands in K-pop. Yeah. <laughs> They're, yeah, they're a boy band. A, a definitely a a different a different breed of boy band as far as you know uh, yeah. popularity is concerned. But yeah. Um, yeah so I, I all right. It. Does anyone have any um, surprising uh, ratings that came across in any of these five that kind of you know you want to go in a little more depth about trying to get a behind the scenes of why it was rated as such. Um, um, let's see. I I need to rem- remember them all. <laughs> uh, uh, Springs, what did what did you rate Batman again? Uh, uh both. Both ratings. Oh, for both. Ten inches. Wait. <laughs> uh, objective. <laughs> I have seven. Subjective eight point five. Okay. Yeah. Um. I'm surprised that your objective is seven in that, considering. I know I'm bringing it up again, but Lightyear was an eight. Do you um, think it should be higher or lower? Well, I think Lightyear should be lower, but I'm I'm surprised. <laughs> yeah, Lightyear's gonna Lightyear's Batman. gonna be the crux of a lot of future well, stuff. Already, uh, yeah, we already talked about Lightyear. That was in the last. Well, I'm talking about Batman right now. Yeah. Uh, so he's using I'm Lightyear as a yeah, judge. What you think Batman did worse than Lightyear to? have it lower on your objective scale. Ah. Let's see, that's actually a strength that's a that's a strong question. Um I think the character connections in Lightyear were far stronger than the ones in Batman. How uh like Izzy had the thing with Buzz, the team, uh Hawthorne, her what was it, grandmother? To uh, grandmother. Yeah, the the little friendship with socks, the the taking down of Zerg, like the characters and not just Izzy, but like anyone else kinda in that movie had connections to the other characters. As for Batman, Catwoman didn't really interact with Riddler at all. Uh Penguin didn't interact with Riddler kinda at all that much. Um Actually, well, no, they did. Um, Bruce Wayne and Batman, I'm going to say, are almost one and the same, but the connection of who Batman interacts with versus who Bruce Wayne interacts with is kind of different because they both have their different takes on meeting uh, Penguin. Um, Bruce Wayne never interacts with Selina Kyle. Uh, Gordon doesn't really interact with uh, Falcone. So th- there's just like, there's characters that don't interact with each other. And I guess that is a strength of it because it makes the character um, only, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Only really connects to who they're shown with. Um, and anything else, I guess, besides the point, would just be unneeded. Uh, filler. It, maybe there are deleted scenes where some of these characters who didn't interact did. So, but to me, that kind of slightly weakens it because Batman is going through all these different characters and viewpoint. You know, there's the Riddler story, there's the Penguin and Catwoman kind of with the club, and then there's Falcone, um, and then his thing with Alfred. You know, the, all these like connections of uh, stories that are being told. And I think if there was more mix of these other characters interacting with each other, it would be more confined and strengthened of, I guess, just Gotham as a whole, rather than just the story told of Batman. 
Um, especially for the fact of Riddler, there are scenes of Riddler doing his own thing. Um, probably because he's the main antagonist, which makes sense. But there are scenes of Riddler just doing Riddler things without Batman around. But you don't really see that with Penguin or Alfred or any other character. So I guess so that is one. The side characters to be more prevalent on their own. I think being the fact that it wasn't just Batman or just Bruce Wayne and that they did it with Riddler, I think they could have done it with others. So, yeah. I think they did it with Catwoman at one point without Batman being connected. Okay, mm -hmm. but how is that an objective flaw? Because I don't, I don't think that ties at least the connection between Batman and Lightyear. Um, with the example of character, I th or characters, um, I just think Lightyear did it in a way where they knew of each other and spoke of others. Um, and yes, Batman definitely has more characters than Lightyear, but I don't think it's that big of a ch big of a difference. I don't even think it's five plus more um, in terms of uh, dialogue and conversation pieces. Um, but I believe the characters in Lightyear know of people through discussing everything. And as for Batman, they don't. So I don't know if Riddler even knows Catwoman really exists. Um, now, does he care to know that she exists? No, because his care is on the politics side of Gotham and Batman and Bruce Wayne and stuff like that. So it's a flaw that the characters don't know each other or at least aren't making references to one another? I think so, yeah. I think it would have been better if Catwoman... I mean, she's up in this vendetta of getting... Or, well, her story of getting her friend back and then going after her father, Falcone. I think it would have been a little better if she said, don't you know, don't worry about Riddler right now, help me. Or opposite of, like, you know, I want to be alone or leave me alone, you got Riddler to deal with. Something like that to make it feel a little more real. Because Ryder even pointed out in Batman how the the city of gotham felt like its own character so i think that would have definitely made gotham feel more lived in more breathed especially since riddler was on you know social media and news and okay well you know, so if i her. point out that uh catwoman does in fact point out in a scene like oh yeah the whole connection with the wayne is the riddler's whole new thing like she actually directly says the riddler's name so she does say that in the film well that helps okay um, As I said, characters was just the example I went with. All right. From eight to a seven. Okay. I mean, because I I'm in the camp. I guess when I don't think that's I don't view that as an objective problem. I view that as a more like what is the script trying to require of the story it's telling. Well, I th I think what Sprinks was saying is character agency. Uh, each character didn't have enough agency of their own, but it was more like the world bended towards what Batman needed. Oh. I, at least that's what I'm reading out of this. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. And so, uh, I mean, even for year two, Batman, there wasn't many flaws shown for him. I mean, other than he was stupid. I mean, there was him, yeah, jumping off the G GCPD and well, crashing. Well, I mean, oh, and not, body, but... well, not like solving like the case technically until like all the pieces were laid out for him that's true riddler had to tell him that pretty much yeah. explicitly yeah um yeah so at least that's how i, I read Sprinks' uh little character explanation okay um uh, have we come to any sort of fulfillment in that question yeah I mean, I'm, I, I was satisfying question. enough I, I guess just saying um you, you did it more of a comparative than a, like... Because you, you rated them separately from each other originally, obviously. So I was just curious obviously. if it was different. You think the character was th the big difference. As an example, two. yes. Yeah, an example to go um, with. Which is... I think... I find that I interesting. I just more... find that interesting because I think the characters in Lightyear are obviously very, very weak. So I, we just, I guess we just have very, very opposite perspectives on that specifically. Yeah. True. So that that's why the whole that's why I was that's why I pushed a little more on the connectivity part of it because I could well, see it, it, the point where Lightyear might be better because there's a lot of direct interaction with the main cast between them. 
Yeah. So I think writer it could file under. Um, now this is just me thinking on the spot. I you know haven't put thought into this, but it could be that the the ten and nine that I didn't give to Lightyear could result into the writing of such which is connected to the characters. But for you being objective, writing is essentially the whole bar. Mm-hmm. Oh, so yeah. just because they lowered a, like I, let's say half a point because of writing that I didn't like for you, that could be dropping at a whole five notches. So that is a possibility of connecting what I'm saying to what um, your sight on it would be. True. Anyone else have any, like, I do. Oh, I have a shocking rating that surprised okay. me in the moment, and I think I touched on it then, but still something to bring up now. Um, I am shocked how Ryder felt about Mystery Incorporated. Yeah, so was I. I was. I was. It was pitched to me that it was a, a Riverdale esque kind of show, and it's far better than Riverdale could ever dream of being. <laughs> Though, well, it does bleed into that a little bit. I, yeah, I. It, the story was well put together. Just got really nothing else to say other than that, unless you have a specific question for me. Well, no, no, I just, I just know you don't like Riverdale because you've seen the first three seasons of it, um, yeah. with you know, of your own free will, um, <laughs> and... well, of my own free will, and I had alcohol, so yeah. <laughs> and I know how you feel about that. So, Mystery Incorporated definitely has those feels of Riverdale. It's got that tone. It has the aesthetic um, and the tone. But the character work is much better. Which goes into your objective scaling. Yeah. Uh, and obviously I have a huge fan of Scooby-Doo, so my subjective score is a lot higher. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. Huge fan. Yeah, it was just big, after the... Big first, fan. Like, yeah. That's the one that surprised me the most, I think, out of all these ratings. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised by that, because, uh, well, it's kind of give a brief thing on our Riverdale history. We used to watch Riverdale every Sunday uh, with a group of, uh, shall we say, like-minded uh, friends who wanted to suffer. Um, and I mean, I had a... It was a lot of fun uh, with you guys, for sure. So, like, I have a very high subjective score for Riverdale for that reason, but I guarantee I would not have enjoyed watching that show on my own. But with Mr. Incorporated, I actually... Stop. <laughs> yeah, I, I uh, Mr. Incorporated, I actually enjoyed watching on my own, which already, I think, is sign enough that they're doing something right. Um, and we yeah. all we all agreed that we, we were listening to the song uh, <laughs> for Mr. Incorporated oh, on its I own. I listened to it yesterday. <laughs> I listened to it this morning. Uh, yeah, I, I listened to it never. Uh, I, it. I listened but to it... Will? Uh, well, I'm bouncing between that and Shield Hero Season 2 opening song right now, so. Gotcha. What's this uh, do? Coming after you. Yeah. Uh, sister uh, uh, or writer, did any rating surprise you? Me? Not that I can think of. Um, okay. Well... Unfortunately, Sinister, you're a little limited on Batman. Yeah, Halo. well, and I, yeah, and I yeah, don't yeah. really know what you guys read. I can't remember what the ratings were for this season off the top of my head. I, I think this season overall was pretty more, we were more in line with each other, yeah. I think, yeah. on our ratings. There weren't that many shocking Yeah, things. we got to, we got, we're, we're, we're grasping, we're getting a bit of grasp of our own perspectives as we go along here. And, I mean, the sad thing is, the only rating that I could say that shocked me is turning red but again it turns back to springs's rating of light year so i <laughs> um of what i gave turning red yeah because like i said i i i think turning red is better written but i guess i want you to define more of what you found to be flaws in turning red versus light year because they're both pixar movies they both have good animation yeah. they both have uh well, they're both similarly sized cast. Similarly yeah. sized cast, and yeah. so I guess I'm more curious to because the movies uh, are fairly similar uh, in that I mean, like not not story wise, but like at the most basic level of just just both happen to be Pixar, and they both have a sort of not necessarily coming of age story, but a the protagonist is there to learn a lesson. 
I suppose I'm just more curious about your breakdown for turning red because I know that you prefer Lightyear, but I am curious as to why turning red also didn't meet that criteria for you. Gotcha. Um, this objectively speaking. Yeah, this is objectively speaking because it was it's an HS six, so there is yes. there is a a bit of discrepancy there, I suppose, which is why I'm curious as to. I just want to kind of flush that out more, and I'm sorry to okay. pick it on your light your rating, out. but you know it's the <laughs> it's, no, 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 it's fine. It stands out to me. Season three ro- recap. I won't bring up light. <laughs> I yeah, I will make I will make no promises. <laughs> um. Okay, uh, on the spot because not prepped. Yeah. Um, hmm. Well, I think I think turning red is something they did, which Lightyear didn't necessarily do as much. I'm not saying it didn't do it, but didn't do as much was that the characters of turning red were definitely more of the animated cartoon style. Uh, the mom was definitely over the top and very expressive with her feelings of what was going on. Same with May. May was very expressive of how she felt and what was going on. I think the dad was very, you know, very cool, very quiet, collective. Um, So I think the personalities of whatever character, um, or any, any character in Turning Red, was a little bit, I guess, turned up of expression. Uh, As for Lightyear, I don't think they necessarily did that. I think they focused more on discussion points or dialogue of what was being said about how they felt rather than express expressions of what was being shown. Okay. Uh, so uh, the only reason I'm interjecting here is because I'm going to point out that buzz was very, very exaggerated at the start of that film. Yes. No, that, I'm not saying it's, it's a complete zero versus a hundred. I'm, I am agreeing that there are parts of, Lightyear, where people are very expressive, as you said, from the beginning of Lightyear being, you know, against the AI and, you know, the the rookies um, and thinking he can solve every problem is very uh, animated. It's very expressive of what he's doing. But later on, he's just kind of sorrowful and trying to be the leader. But for turning red, May is very, and I guess, you know, maybe May's not the best character to choose because of going through puberty and changes so i if, guess i'll go with the mom yeah if you're gonna go over top character comparison i think the mom is probably the best choice yeah i think i'll go with the mom because the mom is very um traditional um very family focused uh slightly perfectionate uh, to what may needs to do in life uh, definitely overlooking on her and going against that is a huge red flag to her and needs to be uh, solved, fixed, or stated that's not how we do things rather than accepting change or compromising which kind of blew out of proportion I think one strength that did go into her characterization was when they introduced the grandma and uh, her mom, her own mom, to show how her relationship to her mom is which helped that but I do think even though even even with the grandma coming up, I think the grandma's relationship with the mom was very kind of, I guess, strict and going through the ritual was a bit strict. Um, I even kind of felt this at the end when they decided to throw down their um, what is it talismans or the things collecting their pandas uh, their jewels or whatever. Yeah, their jewels to destroy it. I think even still her character didn't necessarily change at all and she was still just being helpful with what was being shown and done um this kind of went for the grandma and all the ants when they got to the the spiritual world to walk through the mirror they all literally just walked on through um and didn't really question anything else Mm -hmm. um so i think i think that's one i think lower side of the connection there one thing I can easily say is a bit biased is Turning Red was not Michael Giacchino as Lightyear was. Well, they so got, you got to give them a knock somewhere. Yeah. yeah, that's half a point there. So that's something I can easily just throw out. Um, objectively? Well, yeah, that's objective, score. Yeah. If Michael Giacchino had done it objectively, he would have liked it more. Uh, <laughs> I can't tell you're joking uh, or being serious. <laughs> um, Who, me? me? 
Yeah, you, you are you being serious? Like you would, if Michael Giacchino had done it, would you have liked it more? I think, yeah. But how does okay? I guess well that that's a, an objective problem. I guess I'll bring up yeah, at yeah. the end. How 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 would that affect my objective versus my subjective? Yeah, that that's something I would oh, bring up at the end. But yeah, like like what it what if like I think, okay? Well, so, sorry, so sorry, you continue. I was going to say, like, okay, if Michael Giacchino, like, the soundtrack, right, if he did, like, the exact same soundtrack as it is, I don't think he would. But, you know, like, just for argument's sake, or, you know, debate's sake, if he did the exact same soundtrack, would you like it better just because he did it? Or would you want his, or would you just like it because it would be in his style? And otherwise. I'm going to say 50-50. If it was the exact same, I think it would worsen it because it wouldn't fit. But I think, on the other hand, I would have liked it because it is his style. I think something that goes into this, and it works for all of us. Um, Sinister works for you with Sam Raimi. Writer probably works for you with um, anime connections of things you've seen. Crimson, I don't know really mm-hmm. what would fit with you uh, if something was... Uh, let's say an art piece that's uh, realism and not abstract. I guess that would work for you. But I believe in our experiences of what we've attached to and liked of the past, at least for me, of uh, uh, changes my objective of what is being shown now. Because with the composer of Turning Red, who unfortunately I don't have the name of or can recall uh, if I brought it up in Turning Red, I don't know any past pieces they have done that I can connect to to show their strength and change to Turning Red. As for Lightyear, I do know the past of Michael Giacchino and things he has done. Oh, I actually which, like the guy who did the music for this. Which bring, uh, changes to, to not only subjective of liking Michael Giacchino, but the objective of knowing uh, the things he has done in the past and how the sounds of what he uses and how he composes to change for the movie at hand of what is being done. He did the oh, music okay. for the Mandalorian. So, right, if that answers your question anyway. Um, it huh. doesn't. Um, I, you just raised <laughs> for me. For me. For me, it just raised more problems. So well, there is that. Can only stand on this so um, long. So, I mean, like when my connections to anime fall into my subjective, that doesn't. That does not fall into how I perceive the story. That's just, huh? That made me smile. That falls into subjective. That can tailor how I personally like it. Yeah. But does not affect my assessment of what music, I'm watching. Music is an interesting form, though, for that to. I I could see that being able to change it. Although, well, like I was like, I love Sam Raimi, but even I will admit when he fucks up, like I did with you know, uh, yeah. So uh, I it, yeah yeah I I mean like okay so I understand that Giacchino is a composer you really really like. But that does not inherently make the soundtrack good. Because if Giacchino, let's say, did Into the Spider-Verse soundtrack, you would still have issues with that soundtrack. I don't think I have ever 100%ed or 100%ly agreed with a soundtrack created by anyone, like ever. Maybe maybe I can say John Williams, I guess that works. Yeah, John Williams but is, John Williams is an one. easy pick. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't yeah. want to um, but for Michael Giacchino, there's never been one that has fitted 100%. And I agree with you, Ryder, definitely that there are flaws in any piece covered at all. Um, but my objective goes to my knowledge and experience of Danny. past works that have already been done by said composer that I know. Danny so Elfman. That, yeah, Danny, you like know, any, any composer for that matter. So but using the knowledge that I already know of, of what they're capable of and doing... Okay, so that then go into objective. So then, does that their previous work then affects the grade of the current work that you are assessing? For me, it, it does. Like. Mm, okay. See, I, I listen. I, I like a lot of composers, and I, I you know, but I, I, if, it, if they also have to, they're they're melding their what their idea of their music is to a project. They kind of have to fit in order for it to work. They can't, you know, like if John Williams did the music for Evil Dead, it would sound really off. I'm, I'm, ass- you know, I'm assuming. Uh, I don't want to just pigeonhole Evil Dead. Well, no, uh, I talk Sester, about that too I, much. Yeah, Sester, yeah, I agree with you on that aspect. That's composers also kind of, you know, not necessarily. They fall under, you know, the production team of 
choosing a composer for said film, which is also yeah. with casting, you know, directors choosing the cast or actor that they think would best portray the character. So they choose the yeah. composer they think would best portray their vision or film to work with. Yeah. So, so you, but you think that Michael Giacchino would have fit better in this project than uh, Ludwig Göransson had the project for is, but is that just for you or do you think that is in general i don't for regards of comparing to and what would be better that strictly i think would go into subjective i think for what is being shown can only be credited of what is shown in there uh mm-hmm. essentially at the time i don't think i recall that um okay the composer for turning red was the mandalorian and i believe if i did at that point it probably would have strengthened my objective because it's something of experience that I would have known of of the composer at the time. Okay, but is, you just said thought... you're trying to rate what's there, but you just said you use outside sources based off the composer's previous works to to judge what's here instead of just what's here. If uh, if so I know of that, no, if I know of at the time of rating, that is what I go with. For example, turning red and the composer Sinister, unfortunately, I don't recall the name, but the Mandalorian composer as well. He also did Black Panther. Okay. If and, from and it, watching Turning Red at that Venom. point, at Turning Red at that point, I did mm-hmm. not know. Yeah. And I did not know any past composing, so I just went with what I was hearing of said piece, which, at my knowledge, was the first time I've ever heard this mm-hmm. um, for this film, yeah. which is the rating I gave it for that. If yeah. I knew of the said composer beforehand with Mandalorian and Black Panther going into Turning Red, knowing such of that, I would have known that um, style of, I guess, composition that is being used, that is now being uh, chosen for this film, and would have rated it differently with that okay. said knowledge. Is the question of... is just why does that affect what the final product? Is it... That's because, what I'm kind of stuck on. Like, because well, it's I not go, what's in the movie. It's what's well, I go with that with any any past thing. So, if for example we do like a Spielberg movie, like a new Spielberg movie, let's say West Side Story, I'm going to compare the director uh, aspect of it to E.T. or Ready Player One or Jaws or you know past Spielberg films because that's the person they chose for this said movie. Anything chosen for a movie is chosen for a movie, so the composer chosen is what they decided to go with. And because of that, I'm going to judge with the past of said person they chose. So are you like, so when you watch West Side Story, so you, are you comparing like John Williams' work in like Titanic and Schindler's List up against like West Side Story? And then if John Williams did the score for West Side Story? I, I think he did. I don't recall. But technically the West Side so, Story's original music so it boils down. So it's just, I don't know. So it boils down for you that you, when you assess sticking to music, when you assess Michael Chikino's work, you do it based off his prior work to decipher what it is in terms of his style's quality. So like yes. you know what the best he's capable sure. of, and you know what the worst he's capable of, and you kind of kind of go against that grain. With experience of what I know, yes. Okay. I think. I think something to go with that is Michael Giacchino very much likes using horns uh, for a dramatic. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think if that instrument was changed to something like, let's say, a harp, and it was changed to harp, I think that would be jarring to me, knowing what he is capable of. And if it fit, it fit, but I still think that would be off. So and I don't you, know would you why. Then, would you then downgrade him for that? I think I would at least half a point because it would just, it would. Um, you don't want your artist to experiment? Would, well, no, I'm fine with an artist experimenting. I think that would just jar me in a way of like, why would they then choose this composer over someone who ex- excels more in what they're looking for? Which would be a discussion point later. It's well, like, why would I, okay. why do you think they went with this rather than, let's say, let's say, for example, they went with uh, Michael Giacchino and he used harps and flutes rather than horns yeah. i'd then ask why didn't they go with howard shore who did it far better in lord of the rings well, to do this film okay maybe well, because they budget, can't always because... have access to howard shore and they exactly. have to have music yeah okay, so then i guess my follow-up question is then is that not a disservice to the singular product we are rating 
to base it on previously existing uh, soundtracks or themes? Um, I would say no, because in my prior, if they chose this okay, whoever... Okay, but you just... Said, really, okay, so, but you, really but, you, but, you thing, ju- yeah. but you just said that Michael Giacchino, you would downgrade him for having used a harp, even if it fit, because that's jarring to you. So how does that not fall into subjective? Yeah. Sprinks is judging the casting, not the product, is what I'm hearing out of this. He's like, would, they, they chose an artist, so they should have picked an artist that fits the, the music they want. So I think that's what he's going for here. Well, Crimson, I, I, that, that is an aspect to it, yes, but it's of both. I, and not, not both of like, not both on the, the film piece itself and the, the artist they chose, but both as in like the film and then the whole background crew. I realize well, I, I may have just said the exact same thing, but that's not what I meant. <laughs> well, I'm sure we would love to keep uh, going back and forth on this. Yes. I think we're kind of uh, I mean, we're spinning our wheels here a little yeah, bit. Like I, I'm just like I said, we're just trying to find. I'm trying to find the baseline. I guess. I so. yeah, I, I think I, we I found it. Yeah. yeah, I know it's difficult for me to roughly say exactly what I mean and feel towards my ratings, um, which have been touched on multiple times in the past. Yeah. But I try to get every aspect that is going into said film to count for what's being used rather than just like just the writing because I I think it was brought up in Mystery Incorporated I brought up costume design choice and how that changed my rating as for Crimson and Ryder both said you would judge costume choice equal to writing which I would yeah I mean I mean for something like I mean for something like that where it's it's iconic characters who are who have existed, you know, before that 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 does play a role. Yeah, I wouldn't say that every single time, but for something that has existed long before the the media that is you're watching at the time. True, but if I saw someone in Halo running around in Nikes, I that'd be very yeah, well. That's the funny that's thing is I'm I'm, thing, I'm sure yeah. that'll happen in in, in the film in, in that show. Yeah, because, I mean, <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean yeah. that's just a given that you know quality is going to go down eventually. But you know, don't don't worry too much about it, Springs. Crimson and Sinister dug into me for my uh, Jurassic World rating. So yeah, I mean everybody gets a, everybody gets their time on the uh, now. The hot actually, actually, writer, that is a good example. Would that go into your past experience? Well, we are we always usually start with our experiences of the past, mm-hmm. but because of the Jurassic World Dominion and connecting to prior films five other past films does that change you incorporate it you you incorporate it if it's in a franchise to a degree for storytelling but you still judge it based off its own merits okay well yeah that's just because out there for a ruling for writer then yeah i i mean i can sort of i can sort of expand on this a little bit uh so there is there is a degree of writing that you have to account for when you're doing a product in the same universe as a franchise um and then you have to hold them accountable for what they break and what they don't in order to you know maintain a certain level of continuity and suspension of disbelief but you also can judge a story based off its own merits i don't dislike dr strange entirely because i think it's a poorly it doesn't fit very well into the MCU world as it stands because of prior films that have already tackled the multiverse in a matter of in throwaway lines of dialogue, essentially. But that's not the holy. That's not the only thing I'm judging it from. I also judge it based on its own merits and whether it can stand up on its own. If that makes sense. I think so. Yeah. I mean, yeah. when I watch an Ed Wood movie. And if anybody has seen multiple Edward movies, I don't go in thinking I'm going to see an amazing, uh, you know, piece of cinema. <laughs> I, I like them, but I know what I'm in for because I, I know what the, you know, the hit. But I, I think for a franchise, it matters more than. Especially, especially if they're like directly like aping something from the franchise. So like MCU Cinematic yeah. Universe, all those movies are supposed to be tied together in some way because it's the Marvel Cinematic Universe. They don't necessarily have to, like, follow directly one after another, but they have to acknowledge the world they're in 
it's one of the reasons I take a lot of issues with a lot of uh, the world building in the yeah. MCU because a lot of movies don't, a lot of the films don't acknowledge the fact that they're in the MCU world. Like it is a problem that Iron Man does not show up in the Winter Soldier, especially because this is after his house on the West Coast got destroyed, so he's already living in Avengers Tower. So we know he's close by, uh, in that he has to be. But the, and the fact that he doesn't show up to help is a problem. But I don't attribute that necessarily as a problem to, I'd say, the character work. It's more a problem of the world building because it's not acknowledging the world that it's a part of. Um, gotcha. And then there's also a level of like, uh, well, yeah, I guess that pretty much covers it. And it's like, there's a level of, when you're dealing with a franchise, you have to incorporate your world building really well. Um, and then you also can judge a story based off its own merits as well. So the world building, let's say with, I'm going to just continue with the Winter Soldier example of Iron Man not showing up is a problem that does affect the story because he would be able to. The, I can still judge this isolated story for Cap beyond that. So you have to incorporate both. Gotcha. All right. Well, I, I uh, kind of agree with Sinister, as you said earlier. This uh, this review thought yeah, did yes. spiral down a little into uh, personal tastes, which is fine. You know, more ex more expression of our own. Um, but let's go on to something else. Our brains. Yeah. 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 Um, let's go to what you think your favorite scene was from said five uh, things we saw this season. Ooh, it's a good one. Uh, I'll voluntarily go first. Uh, even though I have no idea what I'm going to pick. Um, I Probably nothing from Halo. Yeah, yeah, nothing from Halo. It's a shocker. Uh, I think visually, my favorite scene where, like, even in quiet, I was brought to tears. It's probably going to be Batman guiding everyone out with the, the flare. Oh, okay. Uh, I still think that the visual... Uh, of that scene works very well. I still think the writing, despite its flaws, does support the theme of what it's trying to achieve with this scene. Um, but I think visually, it's... Uh, I just... I absolutely adore it. Okay. okay. I mean, that's, that's a decent scene. Uh, it's not one I was <laughs> expecting to be pointed out out of a few so that's, that's nice. Well, what would you point out, Crimson? What well, would you... that's a hard question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can go again, yeah. but uh... <laughs> Crimson's well, favorite scene in all of these, which is miles above the rest, is a uh, four town performing. Oh no, no, no. you, oh, you, no, no, you're, 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 you're off, you're off, your offsprings. It's the twerking scene. Oh, oh yeah, yes. that's <laughs> that was the uh, the one scene I he kept talking Jay. about. <laughs> I love boys. No, uh, that's not it. Um, isolated audio. <laughs> isolated audio. Put that in. Set to ringtone. Yeah. Um. Uh, I don't know. The whole flashback with uh, her with Kamala's grandma, but that's a bit too long to be classified as a scene, isn't it? I would say yeah. so, yes, but uh, you I could probably it. you yeah. could probably narrow it down if you want, because there's definitely some scenes to like from that. Yeah, I'd, I we'd give it to you. Uh, you know, fine. No, I'll I'll do uh, Jin's talk with May and turning red. There you go. Uh, it's it very solid, huh? Through the mirror, that talk? No, no, the the dad. No, Jin's the dad. Oh, Jin, the, my mistake. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. Almost Ming. dropped a, an atomic bomb there, mom. buddy. Atomic bomb. Ming is the mom. Uh, yeah, Jin and May talking. I thought uh, Ming was bedroom. the key. Gotcha. Uh, with the whole camera and him supporting her, which is what he did the entire film. Uh, what a good guy. It's, it's a good moment for me because she's down to earth here she's very exaggerated through this whole film but this is her being real here and i, I think it worked real. very well for this film there you go did you, did you feel seen crimson did you feel like did you, i feel seen yeah did you feel like you uh -huh. you had that relationship with your father and you you want that 
representation. Yeah, yeah, I just love hiding my inner wolf. Uh, and my my dad told me it's is okay it a wolf? to express it. I thought it was a panda. Myself. No, mine's a wolf. It's oh, yours is a wolf. I don't have yeah. a panda. You don't have a panda inside you? Even though it's a raccoon. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a red panda, which is a raccoon. Oh, I didn't know you were related to Raftalia. <laughs> I didn't know you watch Kung Fu Panda every day. Yeah. All right. Uh, sinister. Sinister. <laughs> sinister. Who's that? I don't know. Uh, I'm probably going to go... Since I have uh, only about, like, uh, two and a half choices, <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm going to go with the Batman, and... This is a hard one, because there's a bunch of good scenes, I think, in this one. Um, but... Does that does the opening count or is that is that too much? Uh, like, like his monologue? No. Do you mean the monologue or the assassination? No, no, not the assassination. But like him with all like the guys seeing the. Oh yeah, no, I would count that as a whole scene. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because that's I, it's it's his introduction. And all that. Yeah, I, I think I, it's great. Yeah. Um, yeah, like that was. I thought that when I saw that, I was like, oh, probably gonna be. If this is just like if this is this is not going to be a bad movie, it could definitely be a great movie. But it can all it's also just going to be a, a decent movie with with just that intro. I was like, okay, I'm, I feel I feel like I'm in good hands here. Um, yeah. Which I guess I was a little disappointed, but I, I thought that that scene enough was enough where I was like, okay, this is they they know at least how they're setting this up, and you know, mm-hmm. I, I I liked it because it was classic. Classic Dark Knight, classic Batman, you know, criminals afraid of the bat signal. This was pretty good. Yep. And it made the city very, very much a character in it, just with that little setup. And Springs. And Springs. Um, you got the most to think about. I know, my answer would be Batman, but that's three people saying Batman. Doesn't matter. So, it's your, it's your favorite. Yeah, but, but, I mean, if, you, if you think about it, Batman one. for being so many good scenes. All right, well, well, then, yes, my truthful answer that comes to mind is just the beginning of Batman with the assassination um, and just okay, showing this yeah. deranged new take on Riddler. Mm-hmm. New, new, new for, for film and audio take, not or not audio, film and uh, <laughs> visual take. Well, our, it's our a very, it's a very strong introduction to the Riddler, for yeah. sure. Because it, uh, it establishes what the Riddler is like in person. Like, if he's coming for you, yeah, this is what he's like. Um, I got a I got a follow up question. What was your mm-hmm. least favorite scene in this oh, season two? Who, who, who's going to bite the bullet on this one first? I went first uh, last I mean, time, so <laughs> you already have. <laughs> Shoot. Uh, oh, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm all right. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna go in reverse order. Springs, you're up first. Yeah. Boom. All right. Well, Boom, I know. Baby. What some people are going to tackle, and I'm kind of tied between two, but I'm going to go with the destruction of AvengerCon. Oh, uh, yeah, that, that was, was that bad. was pretty bad. <laughs> that was a pretty bad looking scene. So that that'll be my answer. Sinister boy. Probably the uh, quote unquote like interrogation and. Halo with the uh, the sole survivor. I can't remember her name Quan. anymore. The interview Quan, yeah. between Quan yeah, and the inter- Brad I guess the Yeah, yeah. Uh, just it, it wasn't like any the acting itself wasn't you know bad, but it just didn't feel like realistic. It, it which <laughs> wow, it was you know it was pathetic. Wow, <laughs> yeah, it was just like I was like, okay, this is stupid, like. Obviously, this is just so that there can be, uh, you know, a conflict. Like this wouldn't, this wouldn't play out at all. This in real life, and it just felt really phony. And like, like I said at the time, it just felt like a high school debate club almost. Like it didn't feel or high school politics. You know, I have no idea what rank Miranda Keys is, but holy crap, she is young. <laughs> yeah, and I was, you know, so it was. And that was just like poor writing, and I guess poor execution. It's not done right. But there was a lot of bad scenes in Halo, but that's probably the one that I think has stuck out with me for the longest. So, Crimson. Uh, the first, 
thing you said about least favorite, and that was the scene that clicked to me was, was that one. <laughs> ah. But my backup would be the twerking scene. And I knew it. turning red, but it was so fitting. Oh my god, it was not. It was not good. At least you didn't Bad. see like. At least you didn't see her like red furry cheeks like popping around and stuff. It was fairly yeah, uh, that much. Yeah, exactly. That's what. Yeah, yeah, I mean, at least they tone it down. Like, I can't. I can't believe Disney made me watch a thirteen-year-old twerk. Don't worry, they'll let you watch you, a thirteen-year-old. They, they watch a panda. She yeah. holds a panda. It's a thirteen-year-old. Yeah, <laughs> it's I. A panda. The intention is there. <laughs> the intent uh, is there. So yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. That'll stick with me forever, probably. Thanks yeah. a lot, Disney. Uh, like Thanks, like everyone else here, or like most of us here, I think the. One scene that I thought was the worst one was the interrogation scene. Miranda and uh, Miranda and he, he, I don't remember her it name. It could have been Miranda good. and it, the the survivor. <laughs> yeah, it could have been okay. That was a way. I, I that was know. there was so much potential in that scene that was wasted. Yeah, but I guess for my other mm-hmm. one, just to add variety. Yeah. Oof! I. Uh. You have the longest, right? Yeah, I actually I, uh... have to change my answer. Oh, Think, oh something's yeah. Been thinking about it now, something is worse than Avengercon. Right, uh, Kamalacon. <laughs> and, but I think I should let Ryder go first because just in case I steal it. Okay. Um. <laughs> oh, there's, there's. I'm gonna go with the last action sequence in Halo. Uh, yeah, that that yeah. was when when he's trying to get control of the ship and everyone oh. the UNSC yeah. are being pathetic as they are. because uh, the the UNSC in the Halo universe, in at least this version of the timeline, is about as competent as the is the damage control teams from uh, the Department of Damage Control. So I think that's still an insult to the UNSC. <laughs> <laughs> well. Uh. But yeah, that was pretty bad. Yeah. All right. Go ahead, Springs. <laughs> I guess, okay, I guess it wouldn't necessarily be a whole scene, but just something that happened. Just Chief taking his helmet off. Oh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> episode one. Yeah. Fuck. If I remember correctly, Sinister, you just went, oh, oh God. Oh, it's ugly. <laughs> put it back. Put it back. Put it away. Uh, I... I it would have been listen it would have been better if he was a little bit not by much it's still stupid yeah. people will argue that it should have been like the Mandalorian and I would say he should never take his helmet off period yeah like, yeah I, I'm uh, fine with him taking his helmet off as long as they don't show his face no as mm-hmm. as I said with yeah, how, if it's back of his head sure as I said in the in the episode just yeah. the opening credits of like the sand being made on him, and you just see like the back of his neck and ears. I'm like, that's the only thing that's allowed. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's like, why would you cover it up in the intro and then just have it be in the first episode? And then he's basically for like 25% of it, he doesn't have his helmet on. Like, what's the well, point yeah. of, of covering it then? I pointed that out on the, the promotional image for the show is it's got every Spartan in the background with their helmet off except chief in the front of his helmet on. Yeah. They, they yeah. took enough notes just to bait Halo fans into watching this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I, I can understand because after, you know, uh, Mandalorian, if you have a masked uh, anti, you know, hero guy or something, he has to take his helmet off. It's just a given. But I was really hoping they were either going to avoid it or wait until like the end of the series or the end of the season to, to do it for a uh, Master Chief, but no, they couldn't wait. They had to. They had to unleash that face upon the world. Well, I, I got a question. Which you got a question? You can't which ask. Which movie it. do you think was more not visually striking, but uh, I, I guess like uh, I guess that might be it. Just visually striking. Which which one captured you more visually? The Batman. Batman. Between which ones? <laughs> Well, this the season. Um, oh, all of them. We got Batman where it's dark and gritty. We got Turning Red where it's vibrant. We got Mister Ink where it's got like Riverdale vibes. Yeah, Mister Ink. Dark. <laughs> I I'm gonna go with the Batman. 
Ya. Yeah. Okay. Miss mm. Marvel's Most... pretty bright poppy, got graffiti stuff. Like don't get me wrong, on. I I love Miss Marvel, but in terms of like what pulled me in very, very quickly from interest alone on cinematography, I'm going with the Batman. It's very, very, very the cinematography in that film is aspired is inspired, really. Yeah, I mean I, I think for like as as much as like you know, there's a lot of work done in uh, Turning Red and Miss Marvel, and, you know, and there's a lot of budget behind the Halo as well. I, you know, and while I did like an pretty gritty looking and, you know, militaristic, which as, as it should, you know, I, it, the Batman, it just, it, it, it looked like Gotham. Like, even when I would, like, watch, like, Dark Knight movies with, you know, by Christopher Nolan and everything, it just looks like kind of any city. It doesn't really look like, you know... It doesn't have any, its identity, you know? Yeah. It could be New York. It could be, you know, anything. But it, but the Gotham and the Batman, that's how I imagine Gotham would look. Like, that, that was pretty... It, it, it was... That, that, and that was its whole purpose, and it accomplished it greatly. So I got I to gotta say the Batman. Over what writer and sinister have gone with i will also say the batman is the most visually stunning but to just go go with something different in answer <laughs> be, oh, Batman's don't, don't double down come on man oh, I, I just want to say i don't want to just be another copycat and going with batman it's not, which, it's not copycat it's the, if it's true well it is true but i did but you know to talk about something else annoying. to give something a little more well, limelight I'll, I'll say mine first then because mine is different yeah. um yeah Mystery Incorporated for me. That's probably yeah. my Darn, that's favorite. what I was going to say. Looks like you're coughing catting either way. <laughs> yeah. Um, Great. Say turn it away. I, say. Darn it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I will say that Mystery Incorporated and Miss Marvel are kind of battling for second place. Very yeah, different I, looking. Yes. Well, Mystery Incorporated, I think it did a great job because Springs informed us it was Riverdale esque. I saw interviews where even the writer was like heavily inspired by Riverdale, so there was definitely intent there, and I think they did a great job pulling that off. I liked how they made everything darker, but not literally darker, yeah. <laughs> like in Batman's case. Um, so I, I think they, they did a good job in regards to, to that, yeah. the visual aesthetics. Springs uh, yeah, got anything I mean, to add? Yes. Well, no, no I, I'm sure he had bad. more he liked in it as well. Oh, yeah. No, Mystery Incorporated, I think, was very good. It definitely had that full Riverdale approach of the whole music number, that modern music with the visuals of what's being shown of setting into the characters, which they did kind of a lot for transitions, which really fit, but the strength of everything else that was going on made it so much better than, you know, Riverdale in that regard. Um I just think it was uh, good to show time because they had like the day and then night and then inside building and each one looked fitting to what it was being set set as. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I just and also for the fact that it's not, you know, high budget, it's fan made. So to even incorporate that as well into it for what was shown, I, I think it's very, very well done. But Batman, on the other hand, is just wow. <laughs> Beautiful. Wow. Yeah, this, this cinematographer is the, the best in the business. <laughs> so I'm thinking um, we're getting to the tail end of some things we've gone over. Mm -hmm. I do, however, have a comment that has been brought uh, found on um, our TikTok social under our Lightyear video. And this comes from a user named Master Rex 67 And they write, People had problems with this movie because there's a lesbian couple. Okay, so what's the problem? Uh, well, the problem is there is no problem. It was so, totally to, which I, to which I ask, uh, I guess, yeah. to which I say, I, I guess you didn't see the podcast. And I'm sorry, <laughs> but I think we dealt with that. <laughs> I mean, I think a good answer, yes, listen to the podcast. You'll get a fully more fleshed out answer there. <laughs> It didn't really affect us. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it, it, I like it even in even in like 
oh, right, right winger is getting really upset about, you know, lesbians, you know, or, or gay stuff. It was like, even at that level, I don't even was. I think I think they're just, I think they're accusing us of being right wingers because they assumed we didn't like it uh, by no, the tone I of what they said. Was, <laughs> no, I thought it was fine. Like it was probably it, it, you know as far as like I think the best thing they did with it is they just made it normal, which is what it is. It's normal. Like it's it's not a weird thing. It's not you know something that it, you know is forced or anything. It's just. They, there's a lesbian kiss and or there's you know lesbians and they kiss that, that's you know mm-hmm. it's like two straight people kissing or you know it's it's just, just normalize thing. it guys yeah. seriously <laughs> it was you know it was fine um, does anyone else have any uh, comments that they have found or written down I don't know, they had seen, I don't or? know. Crimson do you want to offend anybody we haven't offended anybody that's, that's... oh my gosh I just hate those blue people no, I, I the Navi? Really what did they ever do to you? Oxygen. What are you ta- talking about? <laughs> um, no. Um, to answer your question, Rinks, no, I haven't seen anything across any other circles. Uh, not for me either. So, yeah. Well, well you, uh, listen, yeah. you know, listening in, this is the space where we'd be sharing as such. So if you have any comments, uh, leave them down below and we'll try to go hunting and fishing for them and uh, discuss them here. Yeah. Um, and before we, I guess, wrap up, does anyone have any last uh, questions to ask anyone? Well, we gotta well, do, we gotta uh, do character questions, right? Yeah. Character questions. Yeah, we gotta like, who's your favorite character? Who's your least favorite character? <laughs> which Crimson is one of those best? Crimson, out of those two, which one do you want to focus on? Yeah, you want to do best or worst, or yeah. Uh, looking at the selection. I'd probably say least favorite would probably be the best. <laughs> All right. Uh, then... All right, Crimson, you start since you have something yeah. in mind. Oh, shoot, I do. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Oh, I was just p- pointing it out because there's a lot of bad characters across these. What? Movies. Um. Did all I have to do is dump every character in Halo in a grab bag and close my eyes and pull one out. <laughs> yeah. yep. Oh my gosh. Look, it's it's Halsey, Keys, Miranda, Chief. Uh, shoot, yeah, which goodie one? bags right there. Oh, well, hey, oh, hey, hey, hey we, can, we, can all, we can all, we can all, if we were all going to pick from Halo, oh we can all gosh, pick someone it's, different. It's the bad guys from Miss Marvel. Shoot. Uh, <laughs> that's so hard. It's so hard. Uh, uh, I will probably have to say... I guess because of my history, it's probably going to be Chief. Because there's nothing really Chief in the Halo show. He's not a hero. He's He just follows orders. He left a kid, the sole survivor, to die. He, I, I guess he turned back and uh, is now helping her. But that... Could have been from intervention from the touching the artifact, which is what it appears to be thus far, just seeing the pilot. So, Chief's utterly butchered. I, I, I don't like how he turned out. That's, that's a very that's fair. character. Um, I guess in voluntary order here, I'll go with Miranda from Halo. Because I Miranda's a very competent character uh, in the brief time that we know her in the Halo games. And uh, this character is not that. And also, in universe, you know, they make, they make her younger and more inexperienced. She's not a very good interrogator. <laughs> I didn't really feel intimidated, and I don't think she, she did her job. This. Yeah, I don't think I don't feel very intimidated, and I don't think she did her job at all. Like she didn't mm. lay down the law. Uh, there was so many avenues where. Even we're in that scene, anything, everything the other characters say to try and get ahead of her was already stupid in and of itself. The fact that she didn't figure anything out is a testament to how much they've ruined this character in episode one without really delving into, you know, I guess what, what she is, without really delving yeah. too much into her, which is a shame because this is a strong female character and that's typically up a lot of people's alley these days. Uh, yeah. and that's it for me so I will pass this along to whoever volunteers next uh, I guess I'll go 
I'll I'll do I'll do an original character uh, from Halo for my pick then. Not one that pre existed. Uh, Admiral Parangoski? <laughs> no. 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 I uh, Quan. And it's uh, the the uh, the actor portraying her I think does a great job. I just think her character just doesn't work. I know what they're going for, I know what they're set up. But I, I just you know, and granted we've only seen the pilot, so I don't know, you know, if she changes or you know, what happens. So that's you know go just, you know, fair warning, I I you know, I'm I'm opening myself to you know changes there, maybe based on, you know, future episodes. But if in the first episode, I, I don't really feel like she would just decide to throw everything away over the course of, just to screw over the UNSC that seems like a bad move uh, for her character just because she literally that like that's her I know it's supposed to be like her bargaining chip is like oh well I can say whatever I want but it's also like if her saying something or not saying anything doesn't really change but he already doesn't trust the UNSC so it doesn't really matter uh, so that just doesn't really make sense and also it, if you were in that position where technically you have been saved, I mean, granted, I know it would, you know, fall under the uh, umbrella of, you know, every experience has a, you know, you can have a different reaction than you think you're going to have it. So, I don't know, I just didn't, I knew what they were trying to do, but I felt like they forced it just for the sake of making the story. The execution was poor. <laughs> the, the execution didn't work, and it kind of just made her into... It just made her into a bad character, which she really shouldn't be. She should actually be a good character, uh, as far as like her, you know, from what we saw in the beginning. She she has she had potential up until that, and like I said, maybe she will later on. I don't know. I'm just basing it off the first episode, so I think it was an un- unnecessary character trait to put in just for the sake of making, uh, you know, conflict. That's right. what I'll say. And that what leaves you? Sprinks. You grab him from the Halo grab bag, or uh, no else? Actually, wear? not. No, <laughs> yeah, I could. Nice. I sure. could because Crimson, you know, it's just a grab. You know, grab whatever, and it works. Um, I think it's a little unfair for me to say Captain Marvel. And, you know, <laughs> oh well, that's unfair. true. She, she was there. Well, that's true. She was there, so you can pick. She a was there, but but I'm I'm gonna go with someone else. I'm gonna go with Seth Summers from Mystery Incorporated. I I was curious if you were gonna say that. Yeah, what? Oh, your dad's bully. Wow. <laughs> yeah. What an exaggerated bully. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it was a bit much of what him that? in anything. Yeah. yeah. Definitely need to tone him back for uh, next episode for sure. No, I yeah. want them to keep him like that now. Now that you said that, it I want. Might. I, I want. Yeah, it fits I, the Riverdale feeling. For I want it, over the top. Yeah, I want. That's what I want. In my shit. I want an over the top bully who goes way too far and has, gets no shit for it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to the very end, when no. he gets like killed by a serial killer or something. You got God. I can't, I can't remember their names. I think it was Devin. Was the other one. <laughs> I don't remember the yeah. bullies at all. Yeah, the other one. They, they are a character Who together. Attacking. I think that's how we describe them. Yeah, he was attacking yeah, Shaggy laughing. and just being like, "I'm feeling crazy." Like that one. That one felt a little, <laughs> a little more better than Seth because Seth looked was like the quarterback and like their main guy, and they were the lackeys of him. So, with that dynamic, Seth Seth was just oh, no oh boy. Seth and Devin, classic bullies. Yep. And then there was the other one. I can't remember the other ones. The other one, Skyler or something. I don't know. Skyler. All the bullies. Names like once. They really just like were like. What are the most common names of bullies in high school? And uh, <laughs> Skyler, Seth, Devin. Yeah. Should have gotten a but, Josh. Uh, that's in the next a, episode, maybe. A Josh or a Tyler. Oh. Anyways, that uh, I think wraps up our season two recap. Yeah. I believe it does. Unless, well, well, uh, well, unless well, Crimson's well, about to ruin well, it. I, I, I am about to ruin it. Um, I, 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 since this is our final farewell to season two, I, I would like to get our general thoughts on how it went. Uh, uh, do you have like two hours? <laughs> no. Uh, how, I, how many hours of the podcast do we have recorded for season two? That's that's how that's my answer to the question. I think <laughs> I think overall went fine. 
I do wish that Sinister was a part of Mr. Incorporated or Turning Red and Miss Marvel. Um, unfortunately, that just was not a lot in schedule. Um, but I am fortunate for what Sinister was able to be present for for Halo and Batman. Um, but yeah, overall, I think it was a good variety. I think we definitely chose things that were a bit newish. I believe they were all this year. came out in 2022. I think Miss Marvel is um, probably the newest one of the bunch. That's true. That is true. Um, but yeah, I, I think it was a good a good mix of everything. Yeah, I I don't really have much to add. It was very uh, topsy turvy for me because I I uh, didn't expect to. I mean, I guess I did expect to hate Halo as much as I did. Um, <laughs> You didn't want to, though. That's but the, I, yeah. that's the truth. I didn't go and want to hate it. I like Halo. I want it to be good. Uh, but, but then I'm, you were surprised by some other things. Yeah. yeah. And I, so I, I, was, the, yeah. I was surprised by Turning Red and Mr. Incorporated. They're both nowhere near as horrible as I thought they would be. Um, that's the uh, that's the trade-off for hating Halo. You get everything yeah. else can be bad. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Uh, one one is sacrificed, so the rest may live above water. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, for for me, this could just be titled the surprise season for me because Miss Marvel, Turning Red, and Mystery Incorporated were all better than I was expecting them to be. Yeah, I can agree with that. And Batman was worse than I was expecting it to be. Yep, I can <laughs> uh, agree with that. So the only constant is Halo being trash. Uh, <laughs> Man, uh, this season we, subverted our expectations. It, it, they did. We had a good balance of trash at the bottom, and then we got a height of Mystery Inc. We got some middle. It's pretty well balanced. Uh, I th- I'm trying to think. I think I might like this season over season one, comparatively. Um, yeah, I think so. Uh, Just from the ups and downs. I, th- I, th- I definitely think it has. it's different because this one had two TV show pilots. Opposed to season one, which was all movies, and then the show. Um, I don't know about that. For me, I, I don't know. Okay. I don't know which one I have a preference for because they, they're both different in their own way. Uh, uh, well, which okay? Here's a here's a lasting question for you, Springs. Which Jakina score do you like more? <gasps> oh, oh God! Out of all oh. ten, <laughs> out of all thousand that he's done in my head, out of all ten. Oh, well, sh- he did do all ten of them. <laughs> oh fudge uh what we got we got uh we got dr strange that was danny elfman so get that out of here uh we got lightyear we had jurassic world we had men he did not do he didn't he didn't do men he didn't do men but you were listing off batman. every movie yeah so just three lightyear hmm. jurassic world dominion and Batman. Mm-hmm. I think Batman was my favorite. Oh, so you like the Star Wars one? Okay. <laughs> the Star Wars. Yeah, you like the Star Wars one. That's better. funny. And oh. Sister, oh, how, oh, how oh. did the season go for you? Based off. It was great for me. <laughs> <laughs> now, how's How's work treating you there, buddy? <laughs> oh, it was great. I love it. Um. Yeah, so I was I was only involved. I was only involved heavily in two of these, and then I gave. War for you know, turning red, and then unfortunately missed out on two others all the way through at least. But um, I mean, I, 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 if you guys had a lot of fun, I had a lot of fun. Uh, I think my, f- I, I don't know if I would say this is my favorite season, uh, just because. But I, I think this one was interesting in the diversity of the picks. We had a lot of you know stuff that probably wouldn't normally watch like i probably i probably would watch the halo show but you have show it to me. don't worry i'm sure crimson and i will do an honorable mention at some point in the future yeah. about the show yeah uh-huh. i you know i wouldn't necessarily watch a fan made thing but apparently i you know i i will watch most of the stuff i'm, I'm definitely going to finish miss marvel and i'll watch Mr. Incorporated, but so that was a, a cool thing that I think. You know, yeah, I think Ryder was the one who, at the end of Mr. Incorporated, recommended it to everyone. Yeah, I'm like, I recommend it. Go, go support them because it's they they have a vision and it is, I guess, of the season. I think it is the most well written show. So, yeah. so I, uh, yeah, I, 
I enjoyed what I was a part of. That's I guess that's 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 how uh, that's I was, asked uh, for. Yeah, yeah, I enjoyed what I was there for. Yeah. And then uh, I guess now we're going into season three. Good mystery of what that would be. Oh boy. Um, there, there's the possibility we might come across the greatest show, man. Um, but we don't know. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. It's definitely an American we'll movie. Uh, yeah, it's made by Americans. Yeah, I think they're uh, all Hollywood yeah. produced. A lot of practical uh, effects. Maybe. Yeah. There's some some decision making still being made, but yeah. Yeah. N- nothing right now is really ringing any bells. Mm-hmm. Um, well, that was laid on thick. <laughs> yeah, uh, pretty much. Yeah, it was. Uh, but so, uh, thanks for listening. Yeah, yeah, and as always, if you're not in the YouTube format thing, we're uh, Spotify, Anchor, uh, Podcast, wait, uh, Amazon, I think Google. writer's cutting out there a little. Yeah. <laughs> so, Spotify, Google, Amazon, uh, CastBox, Anchor, there's one I'm forgetting. Google. Google. <laughs> Google, that's it. Google and YouTube, of course. Uh, uh, and yeah, and all the socials, I think we're mostly all at Cheap Seat Critics. Yep. Uh, some some are listed down below in the description. And we'll uh, hopefully see you in the next episode. Yeah. As always, I'm a geeky writer. I'm Crimson Room. I'm a character called Sinister Boy. And I'm Sprinks. And we will catch you next time. Later, everybody. Bye. Bye.